All right. Uh, let's go to Vincent. Uh, can you bring us up to speed the last thing we discussed? All right. Um, so last time uh, we talked about the steps of network communication and how there's uh, four steps. And then we discuss what a network client is, what a network server is, uh, what a NIC driver does when it's, uh, when it's with the NIC card. Okay, Vincent, Vincent, you're telling us everything we've talked about in the last one and a half weeks. Yeah. What was the last conversation we had on Tuesday? Uh, we talked about the internet, what an extranet is, and the, ex the internet, the intranet, and the extranet. Exactly. Fantastic. So thanks for the summary uh, of the whole course so far. But that was what we wanted, the last thing, and you got it right. All right, so let's, uh, let me pull up my screen, and let's do that. All right. All right, so let's move on from this uh, discussion here. You want to go in your book to page, let's see. That's going to be – all right, that's going to be page 32, 33, all right? Packets and frames. All right, so when you're talking about networking, obviously we're talking about traffic, right? We're talking about moving information back and forth. We're talking about transferring information. And you move information or you transfer information by downloading files, you know, browsing on YouTube, watching a clip, going to Netflix, you know, email, file transfer, everything we do online, so to speak, right? It's all data transfer. Every time you're on the internet, doing something, right? Even if you're not doing something, right? Just the fact that you are hooked up to the internet, right? You have your ethernet cable plugged into your computer or you have your Wi-Fi and your computer is on. Your computer is constantly engaged in some kind of transaction. You're gonna see all kinds of, um, all kinds of requests to, uh, what you might call it, to upgrade something, to update your computer, to download. You're gonna see all kinds of little pop-ups on your computer asking you to do something. So there's, there's constant flow of traffic between your computer and let me just say the outside world. Okay, now the first line we see here in this PowerPoint says computers transfer information across networks in short bursts of about 1,500 bytes of data. Now, what does that mean? That means that, actually, let me get a sense from you guys if you, you know, just think of what that means. Josh, let's go to you. Yeah. What does that sound like to you, that computers, you know, it's like they have a limit, right? So how does that sound? Well, it sounds like there's like a procedure that goes behind it and it's there for, for like a, a efficiency. I like the word efficiency. So that's going to take us to do a search here. So let's do a search for, let's say what? Let's say traffic lights, right? So let's go here. And let's say, for example, <clears throat> traffic lights, traffic lights. Uh, just give me one second. Where are the lights? Everything disappeared.
Well, let's just use this one here. So there are traffic lights on this street here. So let's look at this one. All right. Some traffic lights. All right. So Josh, back to you, right? Now, yeah. what, would, what would happen if for some reason this traffic lights were removed or they didn't work and there was no traffic cops around? Then uh, there'd be collisions and uh, things would get redirected. There'll be collisions. Why? Because everybody on the road are crazy people, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like everyone, is in a, everyone is in a hurry. Go ahead. That uh, was like limited space and time. So everyone is in a hurry trying to get there, you know, like get out of my way, right? Um, so what's the, so how can we, if we're trying to, shall I say, say the purpose of traffic lights, right? What do they do, Sasha? What do traffic lights do? What's the benefit of it? Um, it's, it's controlling the traffic. In what way? How does it control traffic? Uh, with a light, the color. Yeah, but what does that mean? Just add a, you know, add a little bit more explanation to what you're saying. How do the colors control traffic? Oh, when it's What does it blue, look like? Yeah. When it's blue, you can go yellow. There are blue lights on the traffic lights, Sasha? Yeah. There are blue lights on the traffic light? Huh. Let's investigate. There are blue lights? Yes, blue Let's see. Light. So where are the blue lights? Um, let's go up here and investigate a little bit. Are you sure there are blue lights, Sasha? Um, yes. Oh, it, so, it looks like green, but we call it blue in Japan. Oh, in where? It's it's like in Japan. It's like it's green, but it's everybody said like when it's blue, you can go and. Oh, so oh, so you're saying that in Japan, it's yeah. red, yellow, and blue. Yes. Oh wow. Okay, let's look at that. So let's say traffic light Japan. Actually, I'm finding out that for the first time. So let's see. No, oh, the color is actually. Oh, you're absolutely right. I mean, of course you're right. Um, you know, yeah. this is the first time that I knew that the lights was red, green, and blue in somewhere else. Did any yeah. of you guys know that the lights were blue somewhere else? No. Anybody? Yeah. Um, nope. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, everybody thinks it's just red, yellow, and green. So when you said blue, I thought, are you sure what you're saying? But <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is like, I am so excited to know that, right? That is just incredible. All right, so now that we know that, uh, you know, the different colors and different countries of the world have different colors. So what's the purpose of the slide? Go ahead, Sasha, what's the benefit of it? Um, you have it there, so. Oh, so yep. it could be happened the accident, but it's it's like they what they try to they help to prevent accidents is that what you said yeah exactly because um the way they work you got to allow this car this car has to go uh let me see let me get a let me get a give me one second here I'm not finding. I'm not finding some examples. Here. Let me go to the other one. Um, maybe now. Okay. So here's an example we had before. So just as Sasha said and as uh, Josh said, they prevent. You know, they prevent accidents. They prevent crashes. They control traffic. They're going to allow these guys to go first, and the other guys have to wait. Right. Um, if the guys on the left, if it's red for you, you got to stop. The other guys have got to go right? It helps to control traffic. It helps to 
um, basically keep everything organized and flowing. If everybody follows the lights, we're all going to get there, right, without any problem. We're all going to get to where we want to get to. Now, when you think of network communications, it's kind of like traffic, right? Data is moving along, but all data cannot move at the same time. If everything goes at the same time, uh, there's going to be a lot of trouble. There's going to be congestion. Now, let's look at another traffic here. Let's look at another traffic picture here. Um, now, if we look at this here, um, in fact, let's look at this one here, right? This is a good one. How would you like to be stuck in this kind of traffic? This, these guys look like they're not going anywhere for the next two hours, right? Now, why does this happen? Why do we have so much traffic here? What do you guys think is a cause for Guang Hao? What do you think? Why do we have... You know, what's going on here? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Um, it's traffic. I think it's because there's not enough lanes for cars to get, get through. Not enough lanes. Exactly. So if you were in charge, right, uh, of maybe fixing the traffic, right, you will probably want to, ex you know, create more lanes. Am I right? Yeah. All right, so that's one. We can create more lanes so that all these guys can, you know, go, go faster. Um, how about, what else can we do if we want to increase, you know, we want people to get there faster and stuff? What can we do? Zenon, what do you think? We could, uh, What's, yep. We could, we could send it in bursts, uh, like period, like in cycles. So explain how that will happen with cars. So I think by adding more traffic lights, so then there's more uh, fluid. So then the, the traffic is more fluid. Okay, so if we had more traffic lights. Yeah, but I like what you said first about short bursts, but you didn't explain it. So you say like, um, I don't know how that would work, but you say, um, you know, there's some parts of the world where they try to control traffic by... Uh, by your license plate, right? So yeah. if your license plate is, let's say, it's an odd number, if it, it's, it's, if it starts with one, three, five, seven, something like that, you can go, you can only go out on certain days, right? If your um, even numbers, like two, four, six, and stuff like that, you can go out on the other days, right? That way, they were able to control traffic. But you know what people did? Now, most people wanted to buy two cars so they could have, you know, they could kind of have cars that can go out every day, which defeated the purpose, you know, crazy stuff. Yeah, anyway, heard you heard of that, right? People yeah. are now having two or three cars. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, yeah, crazy. So we can always think of, I mean, this kind of traffic builds up because maybe there are too few roads or there's so many people on the road at the same time. Like, everyone's going out at the same time. So everything builds up. If we can somehow um, regulate, okay, you guys can go out, you know, um, I don't know, come up with some kind of idea, create more lanes, you know, have, um, have ramps, right? So ramps, you know, going out to the right, to the left, people, you know, have bridges everywhere and stuff like that. Not, not just one stretch of road all the time. Anyway, so when you think about traffic, uh, think about network traffic, stuff like that happens. It says right here that you have to allow the receiving computer to process that information, right? Uh, if, there's, if there's too much information coming at the same time, it's going to affect that system, right? There's going to be congestion. There might be, um, there might be a delay because the computer needs to process that information before it can send you a reply or it can respond somehow to the request, 
right? There has to be um, that amount of time. Now, 1,500 bytes of data, it may not even be obvious to you, right? I, I don't think you're ever going to even notice um, that, this comp that a computer network transfer of data happens in like turns. Like, okay, you're going to take your turn. Now you stop. Now you take your turn. Now you stop. You take your turn, right? Uh, this kind of process that happens on the back end so that the sending computer right, has time to process the information before the next transaction has to take place, right? Um, if you don't have that kind of system, there's going to be congestion, right? And you might notice it sometimes. Let's say you send an email, right? I mean, have you ever sent an email and you know you sent the email, but the person says, I haven't received your email? Has that ever happened to anybody? Or do your emails get there right away? If it's a picture, it might not get there. If there's a picture included, right? You may not get there or it might be slow, right? So the point is, just like regular traffic, there's a lot of factors that affect the delivery of information. There's a lot of factors. What kind of congestion? How many people are using the system, right? Um, bandwidth. There's, there's a word we call bandwidth. Now, if you look at this, um, I mean, let's compare this picture to, let's say, um, let's say multi MU. Let's compare something here. Let's see. All right, now look at this here. I mean, this looks interesting, right? I mean, compare this, what you have here, you have one, two, three, four, five, six lanes. And on the opposite on the on the uh, reverse side, you got about same thing. One, two, three, four. There's a lot of lanes. A lot of lanes. Now, compare that to this one here. Looks like you have one, two, three, four, five. Almost the same, but maybe the system of traffic, right, is different here. They have somehow be able to organize it um, so that there's so many lanes. There's not a lot of congestion here, right? Here, there's a whole lot of congestion. All right. Now, when you compare that to network traffic, right, we could call that bandwidth, right? We can say that um, right here, there's enough bandwidth. Bandwidth is like space, how much space our traffic has to flow, right? You don't have enough bandwidth. You don't have enough bandwidth here but you have a lot of bandwidth here, right? There's enough space for individual cars to move without a lot of congestion, right? When you don't have enough bandwidth, uh, things are slow. Everything kind of slows down. There's a lot of delay, right? When there's not enough bandwidth. Um, so when somebody's very busy, right? A lot of, they're doing a lot of work. They have a lot of tasks, they might say, Look, I don't have enough bandwidth to deal with that problem right now, right? That means they don't have enough space. They, they, you know, they're extra, extra busy, right? So with data and processing, we say sometimes that bandwidth is important, right? Bandwidth is important. If you look at your control panel, we've looked at this before, and you go and look at your Ethernet right here, uh, you go over here to Ethernet, you're going to see your speed, right? The speed of transfer. Now, if your speed is very low, let's say you're in the um, megabytes, by, uh, megabytes uh, or megabits per second, um, or you're in the kilobits per second, you're going to be extremely slow with everything you do. But if you're in the gigabits per second, the chances that 
you know, your traffic is going to flow. You know, you're going to have what we call fast internet. And also, if you're on Ethernet, that is, you have a cable plugged into your computer. Those tend to be much faster. Mm -hmm. You have a lot more speed. If you're on Wi-Fi, in fact, if you're on Wi-Fi, you're probably going to see that your speed is kind of going up and down. It's kind of fluctuating. It's going up and down. It may not be so stable. Is anyone on Wi-Fi right now? Can you look at that speed and tell me what you're seeing? Is yours like perfectly stable in the gigabits per second or is it kind of low? So how do I get there? How do you get there? Uh, to the screen. How do you get to this, to this screen right here? Is that a question? Yes, how I get in this screen in my computer. So go to your control panel, do a search for control. Okay. Click on your control panel. You're gonna see network status and uh, network and internet here. And you wanna go to the view network status and tasks. You click that. You're gonna see this window here and you go to the right, you're looking for your ethernet right here. You click ethernet, it's gonna give you this ethernet status, this box here. So if you have Wi-Fi or whatever you have, you're gonna have the same thing. But the question is, I wanna know what speeds you guys have here. If you're on Wi-Fi, tell me what you see here. Mine's at 140. This is who? Uh, mine's at 140. Like yeah, this is who? Josh. Who's speaking now? Josh, so oh, 140 mega, megabits per second? Yeah, repeating. Okay, so you're on Wi-Fi, right? Now, mm -hmm. obviously 140 Mbps compared to one, giga, one gigabit per second, right? There's a huge difference. So if you're going to download or transfer, you know, like a lot of files, it's going to take a while, right? You know what I mean? It's like if you're traveling, Josh, if you're traveling at 40 miles per hour compared to if you're traveling at 100 miles per hour, well, of course, the police is going to be after you, but let's just say that you could do that. You see the difference? Yeah, it's a big difference. All right, who else has Wi-Fi? What do you see on yours? What's the speed? I have 195. 195 Mbps. Yes. 195. Yeah. So that is that is that's that's hugely hugely right. It does, is that a word like hugely? <laughs> that is a lot of difference compared to what you can do with it, right? So. Anyway, so the point is your, your capacity, right, the capacity of, that, of your network determines uh, how fast things can, can happen, right? So let's just understand that idea that whatever the speed of your computer and all that stuff, um, your data in terms of computer networks, like it says here, it's, it's got to move um, in short bursts. Does it all go at the same time? It doesn't all go at the same time. There's a lot of factors that are outside your control that determines how things move. But companies and the, the government are constantly trying to improve, constantly coming up with new, you know, with bandwidth ideas and how to get things moving faster. There's talk of 5G, um, you know, that has its, it's, a, it's, it's, you know, you've got to set that up. The whole idea is let's get things happening faster. But with all that idea, there's still things that are beyond our control. If, it can, if these things can be resolved, it will help. 
Are we going to get there 100%? Well, that's why you're studying this, you're in this course, right? To get an idea of what's happening on the back end that can help us improve or that is, you know, kind of like slowing down stuff, right? Okay, let's move on. If you have any questions, let me know, or let's move on. Now, we go to page, uh, the next page, talking about packets and frames. Um, page 33. A packet. Now, some of these terms are used you know, by IT people, even regular people, right? Saying, um, oh, my packet. Now, when we talk about packets here, this is not your... This is not your packet from Best Buy or Target that you ordered. No. Networking terms, this is, your, this is a packet, network packet. So what's a network packet? Um, as defined here. Um, Freddie, can you tell us what you see here on the screen? Uh, what's a packet? So a packet is a chunk of data with a source and destination IP address added to it. So what does that mean? A source and destination IP. What's the source? What's the source IP? Freddie, if you were sending an email, for example, right? You're on the internet and all that kind of stuff. Um, what's your source IP? Do you know? So it's the IP of the computer that you're sending it from. It's the to and from. You're sending it from one IP to another. Okay. So to verify that IP, you go to your uh, command prompt. And when you type in IP config slash all, no, no, you don't need the slash all right now. Uh, you, can, you can look down there and look for your IP address, probably something like this. So what's the importance um, of your IP address? It says right here that a packet is a chunk of data with a source and destination IP. Now, the analogy we use is the US Postal Service, right? Think about a zip code. Uh, let me go back to you, Freddie. Does your zip, if I have your zip code, do I have your house address? No. Like, do I know where you live? No. No, but I have a, a general idea that, okay, you live kind of in this area. Now, I, ha I, I need to find the actual house, but kind of in this area. So when you talk about packets, right, or source and IP addresses, your IP address tells us your, just it gives us a general idea of your geographical location right in fact this is this is really helpful if you guys think about it because um i mean you might see it if if somehow you get an email you get an email right and the email claims to be from just across the street or you know somewhere in massachusetts somewhere right where you live anyway like oh this is just you know down the street from me if you're able to Look at, the, find the IP of that email address. Do a search for the IP of that address. It will tell you the actual geographical location where that email came from. Somebody can tell you, oh, it was just from, you know, a few miles from my house. But if you're able to look for that IP address, every IP address is attached to a geographical location. Now, somebody asked a question the other day about the dark web, like, you know, how does it work? People who function on the dark web, one of the things they try to do is they try to hide their address, their IP address. They try to hide it. So if you guys have heard, I mean, there's, there's a lot of examples, but if you've uh, watched the news, or you've heard the news about um, some guy who was into what we call Silk Road, right? Uh, Silk Road was a kind of a, 
uh, how do I say? Okay, let's look at what he says here. All right, so this, can you guys see this? This um, this here. Yep. All right, so the Silk Road was an online black market where buyers and sellers of illegal or unethical items would transact anonymously, right? Now, how do you get it to be anonymous? Because they had a way of hiding their trail. And uh, the FBI had such a hard time trying to track these guys down because, you know, the, the minute you thought you, you got a hold of them, then you find out they're in New York. The next, the next minute, they're in South Korea. The next minute, minute they're in um, Amsterdam. Then they're in California. Oh, now they're in, you know, they're in South Africa. They just had a way of disguising their location. Right? All right. Well, this guy was eventually caught, and um, I think they were able to bring down... The FBI was able to bring down, um, and then, you know, you always have criminals always reinventing themselves. But the guy who was behind that, um, I believe he's behind bars. Anyway, let's go back here. So your a packet, right, has the source and destination. Why is that important? Because you need to know where something is coming from and where it's going. For it to be able to, I mean, for it to be successfully delivered, right? The mail service has to know where is it coming from and where is it going. Now, when you have data, so in your assignments, which you're going to start, you know, you're going to have your assignment from today. In your assignments, you're going to see questions about what's a packet. Here's a clue. Every time you hear zip code, you think of a packet because your zip code, you can compare that to your packet with the IP address. The IP address is always going to tell you the geographical location of where that information came from. Now, let's look at the other one here. So you have packet and you have a frame. A frame also has an address. But the address this time is the MAC address, or what we call the physical address. Where do we get the MAC address? How do we find the MAC address on your computer? Who remembers that? Omar. Yes, sir. Where is the MAC address on your computer? How would you find it? I'm using MAC. That's why we are using it on the terminal, like if config also. And we can oh, you're, you're on a Mac. You're on an actual Mac computer. Yes. Okay. Well, as you guys know, this is a Windows-based course. So for you to be able to get through this course, you've got to have access to a Windows. I mean, you guys got to know that. I, said, I think I said that before many times. So uh, let's try somebody else who might be more, who might be on a Windows, Summer. How would you find your MAC address? Um, you could go into terminal and type, what was it, ipconfig? You go in here and you type ipconfig, what else? Uh, Let me give you a clue. You type, you type slash and what else? Oh. A-L-L, -L, summer. Oh, yeah. You're going to see that stuff in your assignment. You got to remember it. So ipconfig slash all when you hit all you're looking for a line that says um physical address right yeah it's never it's 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 well it's always going to say physical address but, but that's what it, that's what it means that's what it refers to your mac address right here all right so this address here this is this is a part of your this is attached to your nick card if you have a NIC card on your computer, you have internet access. You have a MAC address. So what it says here in this description of a frame, a frame is a packet. So remember, a packet is data with the IP address. Now you take that packet and you add 
another address to it, the MAC address. Now it becomes a frame. That's the technical term. It becomes a frame. So the packet is framed, right? So that whole process, the whole process of adding the IPs um, and the MAC address and all that stuff to your data before the, the message goes out of your computer is called encapsulation. Sir, I have a question. Right? A question. All right, go ahead. So is that, the, the, it's because they specifically, uh, a packet is encountering to another address, in this case for Mac. But if it is from Windows to Windows, does that change a name? Would be a different name? Say it again. Say it again one more time. Say it again. Uh, I'm trying to understand this. So every time that a, a a pack uh, go in, in this case is sent to a to a Mac address. So and you explain that it's called. Oh, but it, so uh, all right, all right. A Mac, Mac address here, right? This is not about a Mac computer. Okay. It's not a Mac computer. Okay. Uh, let me go. Let's go back to the control panel. That's a great question. I'm glad you asked it because, all right. So you go back to that spot that we were at before, network status and task, and then you go and look at your ethernet adapter here, right here. We've done this before, okay? All right, now when we, uh, when you, when you go here to your ethernet, this is my ethernet network six. You right click and you go to your properties. You can see right here that when you hover, you see, when you hover, what do you see there? What does it say? Can you see? Client for Microsoft, you say? Oh, oh. No, no, right here. When I hover over this part here, what does this, you see the little pop-up, what does it say? Okay, MAC address. Exactly. So, that's the same thing that we just saw here. Same thing we just saw here, right? This, uh, this uh, what you have here on this line, right? And on this line, is it the same thing? The address? Yeah. So, so this is not referring to a Mac computer, right? It's referring to an address, right? Which is your physical address. That address, like we said the last time, is attached to your NIC card, your network interface card. This is your NIC card right here, right? The description. You have different, you have different NIC cards. Yours might be Dell, Intel, whatever, mine is Railtech, yours might be Railtech. Um, that is the description. That basically tells you the manufacturer of your network interface card. That network interface card has, a, has an address, like an ID, sort of, right? So that's what we call the MAC address, MAC address. And if you go into your properties here, that's what you also see here. So don't, don't mix this up with you know, the Mac uh, operating system. That's not what we're talking about here, right? We're talking about the address or the ID, so to speak, of your NIC card. So to rephrase, a frame is a packet with the source and destination physical address, right? The physical address. So that address here, this A4-11F, dash seven two blah 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 right this address here gets added to your data before it leaves your computer so you have the ip address uh we found the ip address maybe this ip address along with your mac address those two addresses I mean, even if your computer is a mac computer right your computer has an ip address and a mac address so it's not it's not unique to windows it's how computers perform. Now, yours might not show up exactly like this, right? But your computer, your compute, I mean your computer, your iPad, your tablet, your phone, every device you have that has some kind of networking, in, you know, that can go online, right? Has an IP and a MAC address. Right? If I pulled up a picture here of say uh cell phone 
MAC address. I'm gonna you're gonna see lots of images that show you, you know, here's one, right? Here's a MAC address of a that's probably even an iPhone, right? You're gonna see, you know, lots of it. It's it's all right there. You just click on all that spot there, it's gonna show you where it is. So the computer also I mean your phone has one. If you go into the settings, you can find it. Right? All that information is needed for network communications. So whatever device you use, whatever operating system, your computer has an IP address or your device has an IP and a MAC address. So does that help to clear that question up? Thank you. Uh, I have a question, Professor. All right. Uh, you said uh, MAC address is physical address, but uh, when you use a phone, so could it, could a uh, MAC address change when when you move? Uh, when you move around. That's a good question. Yeah. Does your okay? So, all right. So that's kind of confusing, right? Because when you say physical address, it looks like a physical location. So that's not the same thing as a physical location. Because, for example, right, I can, I mean, everybody takes their laptops and, you know, you go, you know, you go to school, right? You go everywhere with your laptop. You know what I mean? Your MAC address never changes. The only time it's going to change is if you replace your, your what? Anybody know? NIC card. card. Your NIC card, exactly. If you replace your NIC card, then your MAC address is going to change. So physical address, this is, these are just, uh, what you call it? These are computer terms. Physical address is not the same as physical location, even though it kind of sounds like the same thing, right? It's just telling us that that is where that NIC card has been installed. It has been installed physically on your system. Um, so you can move around with it. It's not going to change. Your IP might change because when you're at home, you might be Verizon. If you go to Dunkin' Donuts, Dunkin' Donuts might be Comcast. If you go to school, there might be a different, you know, ISP. So your, 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 your IP will change depending on, you know, what network you're in. But your MAC address is always the MAC address of your device. I don't okay. believe it ever changes for any reason. If you if you find out that it changes, let me know. But I don't. The information I have, there's it's not going to change, except you change your actual device. All right. So those two pieces of information are vital. Now, like we said, the whole process of adding IPs and source IP, destination IP, and MAC addresses are, is called encapsulation, this word here, encapsulation. It's a big word, but let's look at an example of, just to understand better what encaps encapsulation is. So here's another picture for you guys. All right, so let's look at this. Uh, maybe something a bit clearer here. Okay, let's look at this one here, see if this is clear. All right. So Kelly, Kelly, tell me what you see here. What do you notice here? Um, hello, can you hear me? Sure. Um, it's like a, it looks like an envelope with like a stamp oh. on it. Yep. On a letter. All right. So, yeah, you're right. You're right. So let's think about this for a second, right? So how do you, how do you get this envelope to have 
the stamp and the address. What's the first thing that happens, right? You want to, obviously, you want to send a letter to, I think this is going to, where's it going? It's going to Michigan, right? All right. So you grab your paper, you type the letter, right? Kelly, when you type the letter, then what do you do next? Um, don't you have to like buy a stamp for the letter? Exactly. So you buy the stamp, then, then what else do you do? You have a letter, you have a stamp, what else? Um, you have a letter, you have a stamp. You take your letter, you fold it up, right? You put it in the envelope. Am I right? Hello, can you hear me? Sorry, my audio keeps going in sure. and out. Uh, I was saying, okay. don't you put like the you put the letter in the envelope and then you mail it out? All right, so you put the letter in the envelope. Then what do you do next? Do you just, you, you, you put the address, right? You got to put the address. Yeah. Exactly. Put the address, put the stamp, and now it's ready to go out. All that process looks very simple, like looks like nothing, right? In networking terms, we refer to that as encapsulation. Because what you're doing is you're basically trying to gather all the information you need, put everything together, and send it out. Okay. Kelly, let me stay with you. Now, uh, think of this picture here. So let's say you, you grab this envelope here. Where's the envelope here? All right, this envelope here, right? Oh, man, just give me an envelope. All right. So now we've got two envelopes, right? Um, Kelly, if you take this envelope here with this nice logo and you, and you put your letter inside and just put this, letter, this envelope the way it is in the mail, what's going to happen? Is, where's it going to go to? It's not going to go anywhere because it doesn't have an address on it. You're going to have a very angry male person, right? <laughs> like, what is this here? Some kids just playing around? No address? on the envelope. So th this might look like a very simple concept, but it's, it's, it's huge and important right? in networking because your data cannot, your, your, whatever it is, your email, you might be email, you might be trying to go to YouTube, you might be trying to go to Netflix, do something online. For that something to be, to be successful, right? Your, you need your computer needs to generate your information and make sure it's attached to your request, right? MAC address, IP address, and that process is called encapsulation. If, you're, if for whatever reason your data goes out without being encapsulated, it's like an envelope going to the mail with no address whatsoever. It's just gonna sit there, not going anywhere. Right? So it's an important concept in networking that your computer needs all that info to move along. Right? Now let's look at this part here. So think of that, um, think of that encapsulation. You're going to see that word a few times um, as we go along. All right, we've talked about clients, right? Clients. Uh, client. A client is the system that is requesting. That is your computer, your device. You're trying to, okay, let me show you here. Let's go to, let's go to Netflix, right? So say I go here to Netflix. Um, so question for you guys, who is the client and who is the server? I am trying to watch a Netflix movie. Right? Uh, who is the client and who is the server? You are the client. Anybody? You are the client. I am the client. 
Yeah, and the Netflix. Is it? Is it? Server. Is it me? Is it me? No, I'm, no, 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 my no. Computer. You, you computer. Exactly. So the computer is a client saying, "I want to watch a movie." Netflix is the server allowing me to watch the movie, sharing the movie with me, right? Netflix has to have a huge bandwidth so that everyone who wants to watch movies can do that. They have to have the capacity to allow people, just like on, in traffic, if you want to have a lot of traffic moving quickly and stuff like that, you've got to have huge bandwidth. You've got to have a lot of lanes to reduce congestion, stuff like that, right? So Netflix is the server my computer is the client saying, you know, I'm logging in. Now, for me to get to Netflix, it's a kind of data transfer. I am making a request, and my information has to be encapsulated. See, when computers talk to each other, right, they don't speak English or Japanese. They speak, they speak with numbers, right? They speak with numbers, IP addresses, MAC addresses, stuff like that. Basically, when I go to Netflix, Netflix wants to know, well, who's this person coming here? You know, before, I, before, I, before the connection is established, it's kind of like a phone call, right? If you call a friend of yours on your phone, there are two numbers that have to make a connection. That's how it is with networking too. All those numbers we just talked about, that's what gets you connected to another server, another computer. And obviously, Netflix is on a computer, on a computer designed as a server. That's what we see here. So a client computer, just like my computer, right, has client software. What does that mean? You have an operating system. Your operating system might be Windows, it might be a Mac, it might be Linux, whatever it is. You might be on a phone, you might be on a tablet, on a desktop computer, doesn't matter. Your computer uh, is equipped to run as a client. Now, your computer might be equipped to run as a server, just like Netflix or YouTube or any of those guys, right? A server is basically a computer that allows multiple co communications, right? Like multi-communications, a lot, at the same time, simultaneously. So your computer is a server. I mean, your computer is a client because it's kind of private to you, a PC. There's, I mean, if we told the whole class to log into Summer's computer, for example, we couldn't do it because Summer's computer is not designed as a server. But we can all go to Netflix if you have an account. Even if you don't have an account, at least you can probably get to the homepage of the Netflix website, right? You can get to the homepage. It's uh, on a server. There's no restriction there, right? So you need an account to now, you know, to get in and watch a movie or something. So the server, depending on how it is set up, can be set up as a client. Sorry, the computer, that's what I meant to say. The computer, depending on the software, can be a client computer or a server computer. There's one more. The other kind of setup you can have is a domain. So it's a client, a server, um, or a domain. So a domain system, when you, when you think about a domain, you think about umb.edu, espn.com, amazon.com, harvard.edu, mit.edu, bhcc.edu. Um, USA, US.gov or something, right? All those are organizations, countries, companies, schools, right? That basically operate as a intranet. You guys remember that intranet? So you go to, you go to umb.edu, right? As a member of the university, as a student or as a faculty at the university, right, 
you have a user account, right? You're able to operate in that environment with your account. You have a computer in that location. If you work for the government, let's say you work for Homeland Security, right? Well, you're going to have an account. You're going to have a computer that operates in that domain. If you work for Microsoft, you're probably going to have an email that ends at Microsoft.com, right? UMB, you have an email, UMB.edu. So think about it as the domain is, is sort of an intranet. It has its members. It has its users. It has its computers. They all function in that domain. And, you know, domain services, you have to install the software that you need for a computer or for servers to operate in a domain. So some of these terms that you've heard of, we're trying to help you understand what these terms might mean. In fact, there's a video here, but I'm gonna watch it now. I'm gonna put in the, um, I'm gonna put in the chat. Uh, these videos are really helpful, guys. Um, you want to, get as much information so that this stuff makes sense to you. And so we'll give you this extra resources, right? So you can watch it later. Oh, when I put it right here. Oh, wait a minute. I said it's just one person. Let me say it to everybody. Okay, so, so uh, I bookmark that video and when you're getting ready for your assignment and stuff, you want to review it. It has more information about um, about domains and servers and stuff like that, right? Now, if you're in a... Now, we, we don't go very deep in this course yeah. on domains and... Say that again? Is that a question? We don't go very deep in this course on domains and servers and stuff, uh, but if you're in a... You're like Windows and... Uh, I think there's a course... Um, I forgot what it was. Maybe it's like Windows operating systems or Windows administration. There are courses like that. You might get deeper into servers and uh, Windows servers and stuff like that. But just what we need to know is um, your client, your computer could be a client, a server, and, and all this uh, help to determine how you access network resources and what your computer, what that computer can do, what it is capable of doing, right? So, uh, you want to look at that video at a, at a later time uh, when you get ready for your assignments. Let's see, we're almost at the end of this. So, talking about servers, you have uh, servers, like we said, that have they do different things. You might have a web server that provides web services. So, every time you go to a website, are uh, you able to do stuff on the website? It is on a web server. For example, Zoom is a web server, right? Um, because it has web services. People can go there, you can upload things, download things, you know, websites. Think about a website, what you can do on a website. Uh, YouTube is a website. You can create an account, you can log in, you can watch stuff. You also have email servers, right? All your emails don't necessarily reside on your device. You have to access the server to get access to your sent mail, to your inbox, and all those kind of stuff, right? So servers, depending on how they are set up, right, can do a whole host, a whole host of uh, different services. And you see that information on page 35, page 36, um, and uh, page 37. So that brings us to the end of this chapter. We've spent, um, we spent the last couple of weeks, I think, on chapter one, because chapter one is like the foundation, right, of everything we're gonna be talking about in chapter two, three, four, and on. So you wanna spend time yourself, um, you know, going after what we've talked about, especially getting ready for your assignment. Now let's go to uh, well, that's the end of the course. I'm sorry, that's the end of the course, right? That's the end of this lecture. I'm going to stop the recording.
But let's do the attendance so we can talk about the assignments and stuff. Let's go to Blackboard.